So we're going to look at serverless functions backed by a Docker Swarm. And this is going to be deployed on a Raspberry Pi cluster. And I'll show you a real use case of what you can do with this. We'll look at what is serverless, take a conceptual overview of what I've built, and then we'll look at the use case, which is a drop-in replacement for AWS Lambda. We're then going to create a custom voice skill handler and that will be deployed on a three node Raspberry Pi cluster. Now, it might be a surprise to some people that serverless is actually made up of servers. You can't get away from them, but there are some differences. Now, Martin Fowler is an authority on programming and on software, on computer science. And these are some of the things he has on his blicky. He says that serverless is mainly internet based services that rely almost exclusively on third party services, remote procedure calls and client side logic. So in certain circumstances, your client side will be taking up some of that work that the server used to do. And then we're just calling out to servers for small bits of work. Your custom code has a very short life cycle. OK, so if you look at Amazon um, Lambda, you'll find that you're charged per millisecond for what you use. And you're also looking at um, per megabyte charges. So if you go from 128 megs of RAM up, you'll be charged more for that time that you use. So we've potentially got some significant reductions in costs because we're not running the server all the time. But there are a new set of trade offs. So testing locally, unit testing can be harder because of the model. And there's also that conceptual overhead of how do you split a traditional three layer application into individual functions that can be called probably in a stateless way. But, you know, there's less issues around outages and operation is a lot easier because you're not maintaining your operational environment normally provided by a third party it's self-contained and most of the time your lambdas will be stateless. So serverless in this demo is mainly inspired by AWS Lambda and we'll find that we can actually substitute it quite well with our Raspberry Pi Swarm creating high availability. In DockerCon 2016 Ben put together a CGI and Python demo with Legacy Swarm and he was basically running Docker containers ad hoc. But he said this wasn't something to be taken seriously. It was just food for thought. He then went away and built a library called Funker, um, which is just a very skin and bones application that allows you to run functions in swarm mode. Opens a TCP port on 89999. And then from there, you can make calls in uh, to a small function in Node or Python. So this demo really concentrates around the services that AWS Lambda could provide and seeing if we can give an alternative through Docker Swarm. S3, Git and Alexa, along with many other services, can trigger an AWS Lambda function. I've done some work and you'll find it on my Alexa playlist on YouTube where I've connected IoT devices and sensors and LEDs to an Alexa skill. Now, when you create an Alexa skill, you have the option of creating a Lambda to back that or to call into a HTTPS website. Now, if you call into a HTTPS site, you get the full request JSON object from the Alexa service that's passed what you've said. And then that gets sent in, you do what you need to do, and then you can return a response that Alexa can then speak out um, so it's very very well suited to this kind of ad hoc execution and for most people i think lambda would make sense financially so one of the examples i've done here is to get alexa to go off to the docker hub and to find stats about different images you have how many times they've been pulled and then the first one i built was called space agency and it would go off to an api and tell you how many people are in space this is what the TARC architecture would look like. This is a conceptual diagram. An Alexa skill on the left parses what you've said and does a HTTPS post. 
that endpoint needs a valid CA certificate. Um, in this instance, I've used ngrok to provide me a quick and dirty endpoint on the internet. The um, request comes into to what I've built, um, Funker Dispatch. Now this is actually an API gateway. If you've used AWS, that might be familiar to you. And from there, we try to find out whether we have a service or an intent that can handle what Alexa has identified. And then a call will be made through the Funker library and that would potentially call into the help intent. So along the bottom of the screen there, we get the JSON request from AWS. We look up the intent and app ID to see whether we want to um, resolve this. And then we use name resolution. So each service that I've created in Docker Swarm has the name that matches the intent. So I actually have an intent called hello intent that I'm going to show you right now. Um, the dispatch or API gateway will call into that function. It will then re, um, return the response in JSON. So there's also some real business use cases out there for Alexa and serverless processing. Um, recently this year, Capital One released a skill for Alexa, which got some really great accolades. So this is for, um, for real business and it's for enterprise as well. If you want to know more, you can check out the link to the article below. And let's have a look at this in action. So there's a GitHub repository for this, and there's two parts. This is the API gateway, which gives you the brief overview of the architecture, and then mentions about the TCP socket. I then give you the instructions on how to set this up. So on my Raspberry Pi, I've cloned the code, and then um, I built a Docker image, and if we do a Docker PS, we'll see that the dispatch is now running on port 3000. I have ngrok already running. That's accepting requests in through HTTPS. This is a free utility to punch through your firewall. I'm just gonna close down that screen. And then I set up a hello world intent, which is a kind of function. And again, this is running in Docker but this time as a service. This will take in the arguments, pass to it. It will then call off to a open notify API, find out how many people are in space, construct a string, and that string is sent back in a JSON format. So we're injecting into a sample response and overlaying this property and the Alexa unit will then read out that there's six people in space. And each time this comes in, you potentially get a new value back. This is what a full request would look like. And there's more information on the Amazon developer skills, set, skills kit if you need it. Um, and as I say, I pick out the intent name and then I'm using that in the code. We have a quick look at this. So it's very simple, very succinct. We accept post requests over HTTP. We then have a look to see if the application ID is one we want to handle. That intent, if we then have a um, suitable um, service, we'll use this Funk library, which literally just makes a, a TCP socket call out to the intent name. And then we return the value back to um, the user. So I'll give you a quick demo of that. The skill that we've built out here will tell you how many people at this demo real quick. Right now we don't have any containers running, but I do have the code ready and I've built out some images. First step is to create an attachable network. Now this network allows swarm mode and regular ad hoc containers to talk to each other. And in this instance, this um, API gateway or dispatch is actually an ad hoc container. So I'm going to run that in the background, sorry, in the foreground. And then we have the secondary skill. 
this is the actual intent handler. In this instance, I'm going to create a service for this called hello intent. The network will be on the same network and it will have, um, this is the actual image name from when I built the image. So let's get that in there like so. We've got the dispatch ready and the service should be there any minute now. Okay. Now what we can do is look at the logs of both. Okay, so there's nothing there yet. Now I'm going to unmute the Alexa, um, the Echo Dot, and then I'll ask her the question. Alexa, ask test pilot how many people are in space. There's currently six people in space. So we saw immediately an ID was submitted live from the Alexa skill. The intent was identified as the hello intent. And if we check out the logs again, um, the code at the moment just prints out the entire request and then goes off to find out how many people are in space and returns it back. Um, so there's a sample of the code. Now, as I said before, there is an example with the Docker Hub API. Um, you could potentially use this with the Docker Store, with your Git commits, the various other triggers. And this doesn't have to be a voice exercise. This um, request that you get here is very similar for different triggers that AWS would typically be able to provide for you. So um, what it allows us to do is bring that in-house or on-premises, and we can essentially replace that entire unit with Docker Swarm. If you've got any other ideas, I'd love to hear them. Please get in touch if you want to know more. Um, this, as I say, is configured for a Raspberry Pi right now, but the only thing doing that is the top of the Docker file where it uses an ARM 6.92 image. If you change that to a regular, um, uh, regular Node.js image from the Docker Hub, everything will work exactly the same. Thanks for watching.